pump video number three. You'll have to excuse the wind here. Got a windstorm going on. It's uh, November 16th, 70 degrees. Sunny and windy in <laughs> New Mexico. Anyway, all right. So the other day, I built this pump over here. It's a airlift uh, slash geyser pump. It was invented in 2000 by Masao Kanda, I think if I got that name right. Um, and this is built pretty much exactly like his uh, patent that he wrote up. It's just very simple. It's three quarter inch PVC going up through an air chamber with an air inlet. So the chamber gets pressurized and you just put a T in here with a little standpipe that comes up and stays clear in the air. This is his patent from 2011. And I'm going to show you guys this thing in operation. Uh, I'm going to make another video about how to build both of these pumps. And I'm going to simplify this one a little bit and put it into a larger 6 inch casing so you don't have to do all kinds of uh, weird uh, trimming down of the tubes and everything to make it fit. So. We'll get to that one in just a second. The air pump I'm using is an Eco Air 2, 6 watts. I'm running both outlets into one. It's just a single diaphragm pump, so it really doesn't matter anyway. And this pump is 6 watts. Uh, it outputs 4.5 liters per minute of air at 1.75 PSI. So just under 2 psi of air, you know, real, real slow and low pressure. And if you watched in the, the first two videos, this thing here with the 3 quarter inch and the two outlets connected into one will pump 12 ounces per surge. What it'll do is it builds up air pressure and then releases it, creating a vacuum. Uh, you know, like a suction up the center pipe. And it just moves one slug of water at a time with air in between. So you'll get a good, a good 12 ounce uh, shot out of this each time. And it takes about, I don't know, about 10 seconds using this pump right here. I got the same performance out of this one with larger inch and a half pipe. I think with higher pressure I could definitely get both these pumps to cycle quicker and uh, throw a lot more water eventually. But this one with the same pressure will throw 12 ounces of water up this inch and a half pipe. And the nice thing about the inch and a half pipe, you've just got way more clearance in there and you're not going to get any clogs. Not that this one would clog in most applications, but this one has an even larger shot. And if you notice what he did, all he did was create a U-pipe. He basically took this, continued it into a U, and then put a larger pipe over the outside. So I drilled into the side of this inch and a half and just inserted that elbow in there with a little riser pipe on it. Both pipes are the same height. As you look down through here, you can see. So, you've just got your air coming in, your inch and a half pipe coming out, and there's just a, a small U pipe inside here with both of the tops, you know, right about that midsection. Now, when you're running it in a barrel like this, you got to get the inlet as close to the bottom as possible, but not too close. So I've got a little bit of clearance in there for the water to suck up inside, and that's about perfect. I just trimmed this uh, coupler pipe to make it stand like that. So you can get water going in all the sides. I tried attaching this to the bottom of it originally with the pump plugged into here and thought it would 
suck water in through these and it would use it as a stand, but it didn't really work that way. Um, it went down to eight ounces per pulse. I mean, you could still use something like that if you wanted to, if you needed a really stable base. Uh, just know that you'll probably need more air to make it operate. But this one's perfect. You can see this pump needs a, a whole one gallon shroud around it, pretty much, you know, to keep it operating. This one doesn't. I mean, this one is, is like palm size. You know, if you want to go through the trouble to build something like this. Uh, if you notice, I tried a couple different experiments there. I was trimming away at the elbow on that side. I ended up just uh, slicing a little bit off of that 90 degree elbow to make this thing work this time. And let me get a little bit more light in there for you. And I just hot glued this together because I was just experimenting. So you can see it's just a U-tube. Little U-shaped tube inside there going into inch and a half. So, let's see how this thing works. I'm first going to run it with the inch and a half pipe, then I'm going to neck it down with a plug-in reducer like that, and I'm going to run a three-quarter inch just to see what the difference is. And we'll see if we can get it to throw a little more water. Okay, got the air on now. Going to go ahead and drop it in. And this is pretty reliable, like clockwork here. And it still takes about 10 seconds. And it'll do this all day long without clogging. But these pumps have to be used at a certain depth. So you gotta have close to a three foot depth for it to pump like this. If I pull it up just a little bit, a few inches. So it won't pump this barrel all the way out. It'll pump this barrel part of the way down and just stop. Now I'm gonna try this. Got a little uh, plug-in reducer. And now we're down to three-quarter inch plumbing. Okay, it's pumping eight ounces now but with a lot of force. See that it fires all in one shot. Now, with the three-quarter inch pipe on here, it feels like it wants to lift by itself out of the tank. See, and that air in that chamber is enough to keep this thing floating. So, it's quite a bit better with the inch and a half on here. I can set it right in here and it doesn't want to float away. If this wind blows any harder out here, I'm going to float away. All in all, a really nice compact air powered pump that you can run without fear of uh, you know, it running dry or anything like that. You just got to put it in about three feet of water, 
and uh, you know know that it's not going to pump all the way down. But this has a lot of applications in uh, you know koi ponds, uh, you know aquaponics type of stuff. Anywhere where you want to move move some water, uh, you know, up about four or five feet. I haven't really tested this in deeper water. Uh, I am going to do some tests uh, with the new version. I'm going to rebuild this thing with a six inch cap and six inch pipe coming out so I don't need to use this clamp setup here. So it's going to be one nice completed unit. And then I'm going to take it out and do a uh, test in a lake. And I'm going to try putting it down, you know, like a good six, eight feet or something like that. So we'll have to see how that goes. There is another modification that can be done with this pump. If you're just pumping water, you only need one air inlet. And uh, this thing will, will pump thin liquids like that, no problem. If you're pumping a denser liquid or a liquid that has some kind of debris in it, you can add another air fitting right into that elbow of this pipe here. And what that'll do is that'll give it an extra boost and break up any objects that are coming through here. So in effect, you're kind of running this tube right here as a standard air lift pump with air injection coming out of its top, which probably creates a, a little bit of turbulence or whatever, and it, it just helps with the pumping efficiency. So if you have a little aquarium air pump like the one that I got here with two outlets, run one there and run one to the bottom of that pipe. Put a fitting right in there and inject some air at, at that spot. Okay, here's something else I discovered. If you take the pump with no pipes I'm gonna I'm going to put this fiberglass driveway marker rod in here just to hold it down at the bottom of the tank. We'll see what happens. So, if you put this in without the pipe, down in a big, like say a uh, stock tank or something like that, you can wind up maybe using this to send a blast of air up every once in a while to disturb the surface so that your stock tank doesn't freeze. You would have to use a 12 volt version of this, uh, which is available, you know, they're the air pumps that you can use for bait tanks and stuff like that. You know, for uh, like uh, keeping the fish uh, live in the uh, the live wells, and uh, run that into here with a battery pack and a solar panel, and you may be able to use this to keep a hole open in uh, in ice uh, by the motion of this thing. So I don't know though exactly. Um, you might have to have a little bit stronger pump so that the cycle time is a little faster. So it just continues to send the bubbles up. Maybe it's not enough to keep it um, unfrozen in some areas, but it may work in, uh, in milder areas, you know, just with that, that action. I mean, you saw it, uh, it sent out a wave about that high out of there. So it can, it can agitate water too, without even uh, using the piping. So pretty cool, pretty cool.